how open ended your questions are, uh, but but I have some questions for for Nick and Gabrielle. So when you're ready for uh, a, Nick a, saw my questions and Gabrielle saw my question, I couldn't send them to you because you were busy. <laughs> well, that's fine. I can it. <laughs> they could have them. Okay. I just want to ask. Uh, you know, Maybe you start. No, I think Paula, you need to rein us in right, right from the start. Okay, I'm reining everybody in now. Okay. Yeah. Make, us, make us behave, Paula. First question: <laughs> Can you tell me a bit more about your vision of for PBL Plus? What is it? How does it work? Where do you think it can go? And what do you think it will achieve? Who wants to take that on? So that's the whole hour. Or <laughs> yes. No, that's just a tiny little bit. Oh, Think geez. about your one-minute pitch in the elevator. Uh, that's that's a Gabrielle question. Uh, yeah, Gabrielle's. Uh, you know, Gabrielle's uh, got some real foundation uh, ideas here. He even disappeared. Oh no, I don't think he was disappearing because he's shirking from the question. I think he. <laughs> he's back. Such a deep breath. Because it's all going to come gushing out now. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so yeah, uh, that's the question we have to answer, and we've been holding off uh, answering for this time. And and basically, and Nick and Frank, you're going to help me out because I tend to forget things. It's not going to be an elevator pitch. I'm sorry, Paula, but, it's okay. but we will try our best to make it as, as concise as possible. So PBL Plus is a, is a dream of Nick, uh, Frank, and, uh, and myself uh, for the past three or four years. And the idea behind it, and the more we talk about PBL, and, and this day has been opening, our, I know, all of our minds on, on what's going on, and just seeing how, how project-based learning has become such an important thing in, in the mind of a lot of really good educators, and, and a lot of educators that we've seen today. And... And what we thought uh, three or four years ago when we've been developing, we now have the minimum viable product, is that basically it's a community. It's a community of people who really believe that education has to change and that education has to be transformed. And for it to be transformed, uh, this means that, and, and we've been seeing this with the coronavirus and with the COVID, um, that every single person in the world has the ability to an educator and this is something that um, that that has been talked a lot about today but we need every single professional every single expert in the world to become involved in education so we have three pillars one is exactly that is that we want to make every single person in the world an educator we want to bring experts into the field of project-based learning and we want uh, kids to connect with them as easily as possible and kids to, to really create these projects and, and have people that are actually in the field just come in and, and help them out. If you need a hydraulic engineer or if you need a designer or if you need somebody, you can actually create the project and find them in PBL Plus. That's one of our uh, pillars. The second pillar is that we, we feel that um, that teachers need to be rock stars, that we need to acknowledge teachers as the rock stars they are. And, and with, the, with this situation, and, and take in mind that we've been planning this for more than three years, uh, with this situation, I've seen a lot of support and a lot of videos of, of people actually acknowledging really well, and, and, and I'm sorry that, that it had to come through this situation, but uh, the, the hard work that that educators do around the world and, and the love that they, they give to each student uh, around the world. So we want to make them the rock stars. We want to have this place where they can create projects, where they can show them to the world. But not only that, that they can see every project they've worked in for their entire lives and see the people who, who, to whom they work with um, just in, in one place. And the third one is that we really want to connect people who have the same passion to solve problems, uh, just connect them around the world. And this is something I always tell my students, and it's that uh, there are more problems in the world 
than people willing to solve them. So if somebody wants to solve the same problem you do, they're not your competition, they're your colleagues, they're the people who are gonna help you actually happen. And it all, it all comes with a roof, but Frank says it's the roots, I, I say it's the roof, uh, that it's really, that unites these three, these three principles or these three columns. And it's that we are all lifelong learners. We want to become the social media because if you if you take into account what social media has become, it's Instagram, it's Facebook, it's where you go to show your perfect life, it's where you go to show your perfect uh, accomplishments. But we'll, but what we really want is it's a community that that acknowledges that we are all even the experts, the educators, and the and the creators, which we call our students. Um, we are all lifelong learners, and we're here to make mistakes. And we're here to acknowledge them and we're here to correct them and we're here to learn from them. So, so we really want that to be a principle in our community. The technology can change, everything can change, but we really want to create a community of people who acknowledge learning as, as a whole. So it might mean that in 10 years from now, you are a 17 year old uh, kid who's about to graduate uh, or, and you can see all of the mistakes you made throughout your life as a learner, all of the people you worked with, all of the feedback they gave you, how you actually became a better leader, became a better communicator, became a better person as your, your, your school life progressed. But you can also see that that person from China, and if you're from like from Colombia, you're, you know, it's the other, literally the other side of the world, um, that you worked with when you were seven years old, and you might want to connect with him because you still feel that the projects you work from uh, there at that age are still relevant to you. And that expert that helped you might now be a person who's, who was in college, but right now is the CEO of a company and who really liked working, working with you and who, know, and who knew you and who you might even worked with a, long, uh, a lot of times within your school career. And that's what we want. We basically, we have a technology right now, it's a minimum viable product, but we want to create the community of people who actually believe what we believe. And this is why we did the 24 hours of PBL, because I know that aside from some trolls that, that came into our chat room <laughs> just to mess with us, every single other person really believes what we believe. And we, wanna, we, we want you to join our community, to, to inspire other people to come and join us, not because of our technology right now, but because of our pillars and because of our roots, our roots, which we will discuss later. I don't know if I missed anything, Frank. I think that's a that. <laughs> good answer, right? And yeah. that makes me look to something, Frank, that I think you're going to jump in. So you have a platform that's going to promote student-led project-based learning, and it's going to involve people that are doing, people that are interested, interested in doing, and people that will showcase what they're doing. How are you going to captivate the teachers that need to be part of that, the ones that are that do not understand project-based learning. Because at first, all the people that are already in love with it and passionate knows how to find you. How do we hook those teachers? Which resources can we have available for them? How can they experiment with the platform to get the passion? Like when Gabriel is talking about it, he has this passion on the subject. How do we hook those teachers that don't see it like that yet? Well, I guess, that, let, let, me, let me hit it first, Frank. Um, you know, one of the things that we're doing is connecting people. I mean, this whole day has been that. And whether it's somebody who's um, had um, experience working at High Tech High or with Expeditionary Learning Schools or um, the New Tech Network or Edutopia or PBL um, works, all of those resources are out there and almost all of them are kind of in an open resource, uh, open source model, you know, where they are more than willing to kind of share the nature of their projects and how they were uh, initially created, how they changed over time, what kinds of things uh, students um, explored within those projects, et cetera. And so to a certain degree, we're kind of the people who connect Okay. Teachers to that resource, all those resources, because I just rattled off a half dozen or more that are out there. And I think in some ways it can be confusing to people that they 
they they feel like they have to choose one of those half dozen rather than saying, well, what what if there's just a way of discovering all of them through through us or through through other sources? But um, and I guess because we've had a lot of conversations with schools over the course of these hours um, who have are well along a PBL path and some who are just stepping on the first stone and what I saw in those conversations was it's easier for me to learn from my peers. Yeah. Uh, and so if I, if I can connect via video or direct conversation or whatever with someone who's just on the second st <laughs> uh, stone, um, then I'm more likely to, to continue down that um, path. So, I mean, I think it's a sense of you've got to have the, whether it's physical proximity or uh, mental proximity uh, with people who are already practicing, beginning to have a greater association with the people who are not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me just uh, add a little bit to what Nick has said. So um, a, a couple of years ago, we had a, uh, we hit a fork in the road and we, we from what we thought uh, we shifted from how we thought this was to be organized to the way it is now. And, and, and that fork in the road was this. Our initial thought was that PBL Plus would be um, sanctioned by schools. Uh, they would sign up and then they would have their teachers and students using the platform. And what we came to believe uh, based on our experience in working with lots of schools, uh, is, is that that seemed to be the guaranteed way of taking a really slow road. Um, even though PBL, and, and I know mostly from working with my clients across the USA, so uh, e even though um, PBL is highly valued um, abstractly by at least the ones that I work with, um, and I know that's a very small piece. Um, I don't generally see that the leaders of schools um, fully understand this. They fear the risks of it. Um, and so they're not in, we don't believe they're in positions to, to, to be able to jump on board. <laughs> it's like, okay, teachers and students, jump on board a ship that I don't quite understand. Uh, th th that's just not going to work. So we figured that the way to, as Nick just says, um, the, the way to, um, to, 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 to get an outreach, to get a good outreach, is to get to those people who have the need to know and to bring them into connection with people who can help them, adults who can help them. Uh, and so that, that means that that it's not so much focused on uh, pulling uh, traditional teachers into the fold, it's focused on really empowering uh, kids oh, doing practice. Mm -hmm. and, and so that may be a modest start, but, but, but that's what we think we can, uh, you know, that's what we think is, is, is an appropriate focus and start. Uh, as, we, as we move on, as the years will develop other tools, to embrace those, uh, and, and you know, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, but but let's just first get those kids engaged in in the uh, adults. Okay. Um, so the, that's the interesting part, Nick, because you both said something very similar, but you are starting with a platform that is twenty four seven today, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, um, today w w was a, a way of raising awareness that the platform even exists, um, and. Um, to be inspired by the, the breadth and depth of practice around the world. Should, should we consider this as being a live coaching platform at times with where teacher is available and the group gets together at different times, a place a person can post a question or a doubt and someone of the, all, all the people that are involved will be able to check it out? How do yeah. you envision that part? Yeah, because I mean, so the 24-7 that... was very interesting. Right, right. So, I mean, I guess the essence of the way um, we envisioned it is that someone enters the platform. You can do it now. 
Um, you don't need to send me an email. You can just go directly to pblplus.org and enter in your profile and, and away you go. But the idea is you say, I'm a learner, I'm an educator, I'm a maker, or, I'm sorry, I'm an expert. And, and then you build out your profile. Um, and you say, here's some things I'm passionate about. Here's some skills I have. Here's some big questions I have. And then you can begin to search and say, who else has those kinds of questions? And, and in doing that, um, whether it's educator to educator or expert to, to learner, all of those possibilities begin to you know, um, become apparent. And then, then um, we look for the synergy of here's a question and here's five students who are passionate about pursuing that question and here's an expert who thinks they have something to contribute and here's an educator who thinks they can help um, bring some additional um, perspective to it. So re really on, on the platform, ideally people will find, uh, share those kinds of questions, problems, et cetera, and, and seek out um, support. So today it's a launch, Frank. How do you plan to follow up now? Because people are gonna, I saw when I started earlier today, there was like 32 people. I bet you had more people earlier on. People are gonna have the buzz of the 24 seven. How is the follow up? How are you gonna develop the concept? Like what is the tomorrow for us? that have been involved today. Some sleep. Yeah. We, were, we, were, we, were, we were generally hovering around 40 for much of the day. And, and now, of course, is It's the, late at night. Getting pretty late in the, uh, in the USA anyway. And we know there's a stronger, there's a lot of PDL development in, in yeah. Let's say that's not in other parts of the world. So the numbers are are were good, and and um, um, we have fifteen right now, and that's that's just fine. Yeah. Um, but um, you're asking questions that I don't know the answers to, and I don't know that Nick and Gavrell knows the answers to. But I what I will say this: um, today was a big crescendo for us. Today was a day where we had really thoughtful people um, deep into not only project-based learning, but deep into an understanding of powerful learning. And they put a lot of things on the table. So um, being able to share that, we, we will be editing these videos and making them available. Um, so maybe our next step is the, the repository um, you, you know, the, the curation of what these experts have said and, and make that accessible to, to every teacher. I mean, making it safe is yes. one of the biggest challenges um, because it goes against everything that, uh, everything uh, that's traditional in, in, in training. So we've got to make it safe for teachers to take the plunge. We've got to make it to, to give confidence to the early adopters in any school to go for it, even though the climate of their school may not be supportive of it. Yeah. We've got, we've got to take, I mean, when I think about all those things that were said today, when properly curated uh, and, and, and edited, um, they are, we have great teaching tools so that the early adopter in a school, who may be the outsider, uh, the, the one who's doing it despite the limitations of attitude in the school climate, uh, that person has something to share. And, 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 and um, so that person could go to the administration and say, here's three links, can we talk next week? Um, that is a quiet way, but I think it could be very powerful in, in changing minds. And, Agreed. And I'll, and I'll, I'll add something. Right now, uh, you can log into pdlplus.org and, and have and make your, uh, an account, and you can choose to be either an, an educator, a maker, a an expert, or um, well, those are the three categories. The idea behind this is CC that. Once you have your, your, your login name and website, you can start creating projects. So you, you go to your project, you tell us what your description is, you tell us what your objective is, 
and you say what what uh, you know what are the people you want to be involved. If you have your friends already in PBL Plus, you can get them in. If you have some experts or your teacher who wants to be supervising, you can get them in. And you can start planning it on stages. So each uh, we have three stages right now, and you can plan what uh, what goals are for each stage. And after that, you can start uh, doing updates. You can start putting in your framework. You can start putting in your investigation and, and creating your final document with people around the world. So. It is 24 hours, but it doesn't mean you're going to have to be 24 hours oh, uh, in, inside of it. You can, it's, it's like a Google Doc where you can, where you can uh, use it, where you can change it, where people can put in comments. So imagine uh, you're trying to do what's one of the best schools in the world, or you're doing a project on how schools should be. And you ask Frank to be your expert. Frank can see your progress and he can accept. And say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be your expert. I'm gonna allow myself to have three or four hours in with your, with your project. Or Frank can say, I'm just gonna follow it, and he can see what your updates are, and he can comment. He can put in a link saying you might want to investigate this, or he can, he can participate as, as much or as little as he can or as he wants uh, for the development of the project. So right now, uh, and. And also, you know, we're not trying to, to invent what's already invented. If you want to use a Google Docs or if you want to use YouTube to meet or Zoom to meet, uh, this is just a place where you, where you put your updates, where you find people and where you, where you have a community of, of people who support lifelong le learners. And right now, this is what we have. And you can, you can test it out. You can tell us where our flaws are. You can tell us how user-friendly or not user-friendly it is. Uh, but we want to start having people, uh, students, educators, and experts around the world, just start logging into to to what to what we're doing and and see how they can use our tools to connect and to create better projects that are that go beyond your classroom, your your school, and even your country. And and also we have some ways so you can you can have your badges. So if you create your project, you're mm. going to start having badges. You can also have your own personal, like self-awarded badges where you say, I'm a programmer. And people can actually say, oh, he actually is a really good programmer. I've worked with him. And he, they can start validating your own badges. So it's a way where we go outside of sta standardization of students and we go to personalization of students. And we start to acknowledge those differences uh, to actually, so, so they can actually be better for you. If you need somebody who's very different than you for your project that knows all of the things you don't, well, that's where we go away from, this is my number in an SAT, or this is my number in a standardized mm -hmm. test. So, this is my life, this is my life project, and these are my, my skills. And, and maybe I can help you in your project with these skills that you don't have, and our differences are actually what makes us better or what makes us work well together. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also trying to get badges for failures. So if you do a project and you never succeeded or you just procrastinated or there were so many difficulties that you couldn't continue, that's okay. Just send some reflection on why you failed and how you're gonna do better next time. And you're gonna get a badge for a, a project failure badge, which is nice. And maybe you get 10 project failures, but you learn each one of them. And that's what we want. Uh, for, for the learning curve. So Gabriel, with what you said now, um, as a, I used to work at the UN school and one of the things with my students when we did project-based learning and we were helping solve the world, world problems that were happening and the students were trying to figure it out. One of the things I think it gains a lot if you have a channel for the project ending. So is it writing a letter to someone to the mayor, if it's writing a letter to someone, are, do, you have a, do you envision something like for some of the projects, how to help students to have their voice heard and go beyond the project with the experts like Frank or Nick or yourself would say, oh, look guys, this project is going really well. Have you thought about writing a letter and sending the suggestion out? Because also students would like to see the, get, that something happens with it, right? that an action, that to be an, an agent of change. Yes. At least that our school worked well, the students would feel powerful and honored and heard. No, and, and that's 
I haven't nope. thought about it too. too. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I guess my thought is, um, you know, for a couple of years in American educational conferences, people have been using the phrase that the one who does the work does the learning. And I think too often educators adopt the attitude that they need to drive a bulldozer in front of the kids and identify, oh, you need to write a letter to the mayor. Well, rather, they have to know, yeah. Rather than letting the students ask the questions about, well, what should we do next? And have them kind of worry through that. And maybe they discover the, the letter to the mayor is the thing, but I think the that it creates such a false reality in a project when the adult is out there clearing the path and saying, okay, now, now you go do this work, you know, and let them uh, achieve some resistance because that's what ultimately is going to build resilience in them is that not everything works out. Uh, the, mayor doesn't, the mayor doesn't respond. No, definitely. Um, we but heard it's nice a, a, a really wonderful uh, description earlier today. That was Jim Bentley's kids, right? That, in California that were um, advocating for getting, uh, moving money around in the um, school district budget so that they could get some things done. And they got to the point of, you know, ready to advocate and ultimately a new solution emerged. But, you know, that, but they did that. That wasn't the yeah. teacher saying, well, obviously the next thing we do is go to the school board, you know. Um, they had to figure it out. They had to realize, right? But that's the wonderful project-based learning. You were listening to your students all the time on where they're going. And when they realize it's beyond the classroom and it comes from them, that's what it's worth it, right? So if there's experts like you guys in it and you're hearing the project and you're seeing what's happening, you don't give an answer, but you put all the you are seeing all the effort they're putting and they will come to the solutions because of the work, how it's done and the experts you are putting into your, into your yeah. platform, right? Yeah, I mean, in that, uh, earlier today, I mentioned um, Susie Boss's book, um, Teaching Project-Based Learning or something like that. Yeah. I don't, she, she would be appalled that I don't know the name. Um, I, I, I gave it to uh, Los Cabos when I was down there in, um, whenever I was there, February. And, um, in that book, she she's mostly capturing the teacher's voice of experience of, you know, how how do I best facilitate project-based learning? And one of the educators that she refers to has this kind of go-to list of 10 different ways to respond to a kid who comes to you asking <laughs> for the answer. And, and here's the question back to them that doesn't come across as the I don't know, what do you think? You know, they, it, it's more skillfully delivered than that. And as a result, it puts constantly then, the yeah. inquiry back in the hands of the young person. It's all the rather five than, whys, right? Why and why and why? Right, rather than, the, rather than the teacher being the one who has to um, be the only source of, of information. So um, I, it, I don't remember how I got to that answer for you, but um, no, there, there are those kinds of resources out there um, I don't know, my, my reading list for education is about 280 books or something like that. It takes several pages to, and really small imagine. type to share. Um, and I, you know, anytime that I'm inspired by things like that, I try to get those little bits and pieces out there so that other people will run with them. So. And how did the three of you got together? I don't know if you covered that already. How did these passions <laughs> meet and converge? Yeah, it's, uh, well, there, uh, can I tell a funny story about it? Yes, yeah, share, share about so, the founders now. Yeah, well, so in 2000, well, Gabriel's family has this uh, amazing school in, in Chia, uh, Gimnasio Los Calvos, outside of, of Bogota. Um, and for several years in a row, uh, the Diago family sent various siblings and spouses up to the learning environments for tomorrow program that Frank started and you and I have, have worked in for, for years. Um, and uh, uh, I think it was 2015, maybe 14, that uh, Gabrielle was in the session that I was facilitating and was the quietest young person in the room. I don't know that he said a single thing <laughs> the entire time. And then I want to say the next year, 
was it your brother came oh, up? Yeah. Andres came. And, and he was a little more talkative and, and Frank and uh, Andres and I and some other family member, we all went out for dinner and, you know. And so then, I don't know, maybe a year later or so, Frank says, hey, the, we, you know, we've got uh, Gabrielle down in, um, Bogota. in um, Colombia that wants to launch this idea. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, you know, great. And we, we did a revolution in education Congress there in 2017. And it wasn't until I walked up to Gabrielle at the school or the hotel or whatever for the very first time. <laughs> and, I, and Gabrielle's like, oh, it's so nice to finally meet you. And I was like, what do you Wait mean? Wait a minute. <laughs> at the restaurant, you know, a couple of years ago, what are you talking about? And anyhow, so I had the two brothers totally confused. I love it. But so anyhow, so I don't know, Frank, you've been working down in Los Cabos since 13 or 14 or something like that. I think it was, yeah. Um, so all, all so, roads lead to, to left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. If, oh, if only that could be true. Yeah. No, I, I um, you know, oh boy, how did, yeah, what, what are we uh, as, as a team or as three people? I, uh, Nick and I uh, met in 2004. And um, Nick was doing, um, may I say this, Nick, very traditional work um, for schools uh, as, uh, as, as an architect. Um, and uh, I came in town and did a workshop and, and kind of became disruptive. And um, er ever since that day, Nick was the misfit in his office. Um, and, he, and, he, and then he, Finally, and, and, and then he kept pulling me in to his region to do, pro, to do visioning work. Um, and um, that went on for a couple of years. And, and, then, um, and then he jumped ship and be, became an ed planner. Uh, and um, so, so that was a lovely progression. But I feel like I know Nick and Gabrielle uh, so, so in our, my path at Calbos was very similar. Uh, Gabrielle got me there, and then we did the, as I said earlier in one of the earlier um, uh, discussions, we, we we did visioning, and then I led PBL uh, concepts and training, and then we launched teachers. We talked to parents, and then I came back and did rounds over time. Um, and every one of those was part of a continuing dialogue with Gabrielle. So. Um, the fact that the three of us are so closely bonded on this initiative um, <laughs> doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> and, and it's not like, it's not like, it is definitely not um, somebody looking for a business partner uh, to, to create this platform. It's more like passions overlapping each other and trust. Trust was a word that came up over and over again today. Uh, so that's deep. I mean, they're my deepest collaborators on not only this, but on some other things as well. Uh, so um, yeah, it's got to be run, you know, as a business and all that other stuff, but, but it, it, it really goes much Beyond. deeper. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean I, I haven't told Frank this, but I told Gabrielle back in February that you know, my intention is to positively impact the educational future of uh, 1.6 billion kids um, in a decade. Yeah. And um, so this platform seems to be a good start. Our revolution in education congresses are a, a good way to achieve that. The work that we do at Harvard is a good way to achieve that. So, um, you know, that's just all of the kids in the world. Uh, between the ages of five and eighteen, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not hitting the zero to fives. Uh, so, so, just to uh, you know, give myself a little imagine. bit of slack, you know. So, just imagine now, before I get Frank to ask his questions, because he has a list as well, because I have many. Um, if you could now, right now, after seeing all the reactions you had throughout the day, if you could design your newspaper, what would be the first calling about PBL Plus in an year? Five years and ten years. 
what would we, you like we, we to see? We know the see? answer to the 10 years. Like, I mean, <laughs> exactly. What would you like to see in one year from now, people saying about PBL Plus and how it affected them based on the comments and the people that jumped in today? Because there is a vibe and there is an excitement about it, right? You are living it right now, the kickstart. Well, I'd like it to say PBL Plus takes over the world, but <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to get to that. Um, quite immediately. I, I, I would be very happy that it would say PBL Plus supports deeper learning and empowers students to do things that many adults in their lives don't think they can do. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Nick? No, uh, that's, that's great. And we, we adults have not necessarily set up our young people for success in all the different conflicts that we've created around the world, et cetera. And so I think we almost owe it to them to give them an educational experience that many of us didn't have in order that they can flourish in a world that's constantly changing around them uh, rather than feel overwhelmed uh, by it. I would have to say it would have to go something like PBL Plus, the website that changed education for, for life. <laughs> it's a good envisioning. So I can tell you from my side here that I, from what I understand, you want to be inside the classrooms, outside the classrooms, connecting the learners and the teachers that are learners as well, with experts, with makers, with people with the same doubts to improve the whole education front, right? In a platform that's easily accessible. Mm -hmm. yes. but to, but to cross out improve, <laughs> that's, that's- Incremental. That's incremental change. We want to transform. You want to transform. That's the word, right? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. For me, if, if I can just say the elevator pitch, for me, the platform is easy. You know Cor Coursera or, or the website yeah. that just gives, it's it's basically a traditional uh, university put online. So you, you have your lectures, you have your YouTube videos and lectures, and people will will go into it and will have the traditional university experience. And I was reading uh, Most Likely to Succeed, and, and what they said, or what, what uh, Tony Wagner says in that is that they have a 10% uh, finishing rate. So only 10% of the people who start a course there Stay will there. finish it. So my idea is, okay, let's think about what the university of the future should look like and how personalized it should be, how the curriculum should be for the projects. Uh, Frank told me once about a BYOB, which is bring your own business uh, uh, school or, or university. And yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. So basically, that and, and what they do is you bring your own business, and they they'll make the curriculum towards your business, and 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 they'll they'll make your learning towards what you want in life. So for me, that's what we want from this. We want to do what Coursera did to traditional education, but how education or how universities should actually be. They should be personalized. They should, you should be able to do your own path. You should be able to to do a mini course if you don't see anything or if you don't. If you don't know something that, that will help you in your life goals or in your life uh, career, you should be able to do it and to learn it quickly in two months or maybe a week if that's what you need. And that's basically what we want. We want to do the same thing Coursera did, but with, uh, with an education that we think should universities should be doing, especially for the price they're charging, right? <laughs> This is it. And I think you're talking about a very, really different approach from Coursera. And I think from what I've heard today, I was, I've been here for the past two hours with you guys. It's a different approach. And it seems to me the world is ready for this now. Because everybody's being flexible, is making things work, and the understanding and the growth and the empathy is there. So the understanding of the other. And that's what we base to when we do a project-based learning, right? Exactly. The, yeah, the I mean, transformation I, and the process of how to transform. Su Susie uh, Boss very optimistically said that she thought there would be significant change in the world in the next five to 10 months instead of the five to 10 years that Frank this was giving her some flexibility on. And I, it is going to be a telling five to 10 months because yep. um, there's certainly the potential 
to use this globally disruptive event. Exactly. That I mean, it's impacted 1.5 of the 1.6 billion young people. So, I mean, that's pretty much almost everybody, except for Sweden and Norway or something, I guess, have gotten away without uh, <laughs> having know. to shut down. And um, so we can either treat this global disruptive event as a uh, opportunity to open our eyes and say, um, why would we revert to business as usual? Or you know, I, I mean, I'm pretty certain there could be a lot of schools, including ones that are geographically really close to mine, to where I live, that will um, will say, nope, the moment we can get those kids back in there, 32 kids in a room with one educator, you know, we can't get there fast enough, you know, and uh. so, but it will, you know, in some ways, I think the best thing that could happen in this moment would be that there isn't any return to school uh, until October is, or, no, yes. or November or November um, in that it, it goes on long enough that we can't just patch it together like we're doing right now. Um, and and it, it opens a collection of questions and they're almost all relationship and relevance questions. So the relationship side is if we can't start school until November, why are we taking a kid who built our relationship with a, a second grade teacher um, and placing them in a virtual environment with a third grade teacher that they have no connection with at all? No connection with. Uh, so, so here's an opportunity to say, well, what if that educator sticks with a kid for another year? And they and, can continue the, more, the path. The more radical thing would be, I'm an eighth grade teacher or team of eighth grade teachers, and we're going to loop into high school and make the leap with our kids to a totally different setting, those kinds of things. So those are very disruptive relationship related ones. But the other one is the relevance side. I think that the schools that are deep into PBL are finding that this environment isn't particularly disruptive because kids were already working either individually or in small teams relatively independently. They could go you know, relatively long mm -hmm. bits of time before an educator needed to jump in and see. Exactly. Done. And the schools that are struggling are the ones that felt that the educator had to be with there. that group of 32 kids all day long, um, you know, dispensing information to them. And controlling that they don't copy and cheat. How are they going to do it right. now, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> so, you know, so just those two examples, I think, are if it becomes disruptive enough that it goes on, you know, I mean, I think this opening up of the U.S. in this coming 10 days is is going to be very telling. We're going to have a spike again and then, a, you know, yeah. an extended stay. And then that's going to, it's going to, I think you're right. It's, it's not going to allow people to revert to business as usual. No, you're right. Because the, the educational world has been is transformed right now. And we have to keep this up to be able to transform in any other way we can. Frank, I would have 15 minutes, but I know you have some questions for Nick and Gabrielle, and I want to honor your questions too. Oh, you're, you're really I, good, I, Paula. I wanted to answer your question. Um, so, and this is just one sentence. So, um, I, I think that uh, this coronavirus experience, of course, it's disrupted schools, um, but, but I'm observing that teachers first had to scramble to accept the reliance on technology. As they use it more, they will begin to trust it. And getting to that acceptance and trust is something that schools in many ways haven't done except for special programs. Uh, like, oh, let's, 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 uh, let's have an AP program for a kid who's taking, the only kid in the school taking the course. So that's out of the mainstream of, of, of general classroom learning. This reality we're in now is in the mainstream of classroom learning, but it's virtual classroom learning. So I think uh, reliance and, and re repetition leads to trust and uh, among the teachers and asynchronous learning with, with, you know, students not all being in the same place at the same time, but still doing their work uh, opens an understanding uh, about possibilities. And basically, um, 
project-based learning slips right in there. Um, and, and so uh, our platform is technology and our platform opens itself up for asynchronous learning uh, with, with kids uh, li literally sitting in their pajamas at 10 o'clock at night yeah. and, and, and doing things with, the, you know, with, through their computer and connecting to others um, and then who knows, those may be live conversations with somebody else halfway around the world. Um, but, but teachers expecting and endorsing that students will be doing their learning in, yeah. in, a, in a manner that's not so controlled, but it still works really well. So I think those are the learning curve pieces that, uh, that this virus uh, is, is, is going to help us with and give a boost. So here's, here's, here's what I uh, wanted to, to cover. For me today, this was an incredible learning opportunity. And, 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 you, and you know, you might say that since I'm one of the organizers and we conceived this thing, uh, that maybe I'm supposed to be the expert uh, or, or act as the teacher, right? Um, and, and yeah, but this teacher learned a lot by listening to, 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 to um, both students and teachers doing PBL, but also uh, I, I learned it a lot because many of the same issues came up again in different ways. The, the, and so I'm going to share a couple, but then I'd like to know whether Gabrielle and, and, um, and Nick had any um, big ahas, big takeaways. Uh, so the, the first thing uh, that popped up was early this morning with um, the, the two educators from Maine um, talking about, and they've been doing project-based learning since 2013, I think. Um, and, and they said, uh, we did a big ab about face just a year or two ago. And it was when we realized that for many students, the classroom wasn't safe. It didn't feel safe. They couldn't express their opinions. They were being dissed by their students. There was a pecking order in school and all of that. And they have focused on safety, on, on making it okay to be yourself and et cetera. So that was an opening piece. Then we heard from various others, the importance of trust as a foundation for collaboration um, and, and how those two issues are a part of the bundle of, 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 of social emotional uh, learning pieces that we need. Um, and and to, to, to be honest, I, I had just never thought through the social dynamics of how a student feels uh, when they're in the classroom in general or when they are asked to be or assigned to be uh, on a project with other kids. Um, mm. and, and then we heard all sorts of examples like the mm. kid who takes charge and doesn't let anybody else do their thing. So that, that the first, it was when the, when, the, when the guys from Maine launched it early and then others repeated it in various ways. Mm. So I know that I've learned a good bit of truth uh, about human behavior and that if we're really gonna be successful, we can't just focus on the curriculum content. We can't just focus on the eight essential elements. We have to peel away the layers to get to real people. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Frank, uh, I saw it as well. And, and you know, I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek. Uh, so he has a book called Leaders Eat Last. Mm -hmm. And I think it's basically that. It's teachers need to be the ones who eat last. They need to put their kids, uh, and, 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 and they need to teach this to kids who, who want to be leaders. The leader isn't the one who talks the most or who gets advantage of things. The leader is actually, and, and in that book, he says that uh, as we come from, from tribes, we create leaders out of the people who take care of the tribe, who put the tribe's needs before their own. And that's why we, they, he says leaders eat last. And that's what a real leader is. And that's why some, and, and he goes to talk about CEOs who put their benefits first before the, the tribes or the companies or the people that they're taking care of and, and how they never become to be real actual leaders in, within companies, within classrooms, within any, any situation that really requires a leader. So if you're going to be a leader, you have to put yourself uh, last and, and the, the the benefit of the tribe first and in this case teachers need to learn how to connect with students emotionally mm -hmm. um so in, in chapter three <laughs> um 
I don't know which chapter it's going to be. Aaron would probably know um, or Mar. But when we talk about the whole trust piece and we use the ex example of telling stories. So Paula, you and I have known each other four or five years now. I don't remember yeah. exactly what, four maybe. Um, but the moment you tell me a story from when you were 12 years old, our relationship just grew by all of those yeah. additional years. And the moment I or Gabrielle tells you a vision that he has of what something could look like in 10 years, well, then again, our relationship grows by those 10 years. And so, yes, you could say it takes time to develop that bond between people. But the fast way to get there is, is to tell those stories and connect. And that's a lot of what happened today was people telling stories of Saba talking about stuff that she started doing at New View a decade ago. And uh, Leanne talking about, well, we just got started on our PBL journey. And then we talked about it and we said, well, but that was five years ago. You're, you've only done half the work that um, Saba's done. So, you know, you're, you're halfway there, you know. Um, but th it's those kinds of examples that begin to kind of um, build the, a more mature kind of connection between people. Um, mm -hmm. and Connect and transform. Yeah, well, and I mean, to the transform thing, and I know we've only got a few minutes um, before we bring uh, um, Jody uh, uh, on, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful about this disruption right now in that if it does continue, even if it just continues for a month and most American schools just are in this high, you know, this awkward moment, using even this simple platform, minus the Zoom bombers, um, <laughs> it can transform what it means to be the isolated educator because I can, first of all, I can record every single interaction I have one-to-one -one with the student, small groups, whole group. And now a parent sitting at home can watch that video afterwards and go, Oh, I get what they were talking about. Or the kid can watch it seven times until they understand. I mean, it's a variation of Khan Academy basically, but I mean, it's, it's a, it's a way of, of letting people interact with the content and the, and all the discussions as many times as they need to. Um, but the other piece is if an educator also watches that video, they can reflect on their own practice or they could invite a peer to look at that or a coach, you know, to look at, at the video that they did. And a little bit like uh, the people running from portrait to portrait in Harry Potter, you could invite Follow. a peer to come be a part of your class, right? I mean, it just it's just a, you know, everybody has more time really um, you know, because I mean, a lot of schools are not starting until, you know, oh, nice. 10 a.m. or whatever. And, you know, and so, so now all of a sudden you have a little bit more flexibility where one educator can say, hey, I'll come and interact with you Yours. in your class. You come and pick an hour and in the afternoon and we'll talk then, you know, and, oh, and it doesn't even have to be two people who work in the same building. You know, it could be, Hey, let's pull Paula in from, from Los Angeles. Just and, jumps in. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I think those are the kinds of transformative things that could be happening. Well, I think for me, this was really interesting to hear the vision behind the PBL plus. Thank you. Paula, I'm just going to give you the first Easter egg of, the, of our website <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what it means. I'm yes. sharing the screen right now and you can see the website. This is uh, what we call the committee and it uh -huh. has, well, it's going to have the amount of makers, which are the students, the experts and the educators we have right there. And awesome. The reason, the reason we call it the committee is because uh, the, the curriculum that we now use and that you guys use in the U.S. was created by, by something called the Committee of Ten. And there were these wise people who said what we needed to learn 100 years later in each, uh, in each grade. So what we want to create here is that this is the committee. So every single person that's there on PBO Plus is, is part of it is going to make the curriculum we want to see and every student has a voice on how they make their curriculum and what why they learn what they have to learn and why they need to do it so it's it's a, it's it's not just a 
wise people, but every single person within the community, within the world, creating what we need to learn. And every single person individually creating their own path as well. So that's something I wanted to share with you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and it's only zeroed out because we took all of the people who helped us beta test off. <laughs> uh, so it actually, it actually had uh, people- And lots of things there. happening. Yeah. Yeah. It was populated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good. Well, I think we, we should wrap this up in order to give time for uh, Dalton here. Yeah, so thank you. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you, Paula. And um, cool. hopefully we'll, we'll see you in, in Cambridge. See you all soon. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.